Hello and welcome to the Sweet Melody Care Virtual Performances Shepherd School of Music Artist Series. My name is Leslie Ashworth and I am a second year Masters of Music student at the Shepherd School at Rice University in Houston, Texas. And I'm also the chair and founder of Sweet Melody Care. Sweet Melody Care's mission is to inspire youth to give back to the community by performing in their local hospitals, retirement homes, and long-term care facilities. We have five chapters across North America, and this is our inaugural Houston chapter performance, our virtual performance, and it is gratefully produced and supported by the Richter Outreach Grant at Rice University. The theme for this Sweet Melody Care virtual performance, SSM Artist Series, is the orchestral palette. At the Shepherd School of Music, many of us are deeply missing our orchestra experience due to the pandemic. And I thought it would be really meaningful to bring us all together to give you a virtual performance that features performances of all different instruments of the orchestra. You'll hear woodwinds, brass, strings, even the maestro himself. Though each performer will give you a little introduction about how their instrument works, a little bit about what their favorite part of the instrument is, a bit about their piece, and also share a little bit about themselves. Please let me know if you have any further requests for future videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's welcome the first performer. My name is Lauren Anker, and as a part of the Sweet Melody Cares virtual concert series, I'm going to be talking about the French horn. I'm originally from Virginia, and I did my undergraduate degrees at Oberlin College and Conservatory up in Ohio, and I'm currently a second year master's student at Rice University's Shepherd School of Music. A little bit of history about the horn. It originated as a hunting horn to be used outdoors as communication. By the mid 1800s, we started to see music being written for horn, and the music being written was very limited because the instrument was evolving gradually but slowly. Natural horns back then did not have valves and they were limited to the natural, or natural harmonic series of the instrument. Also sometimes players could use their right hand to distort the pitch and get half steps. We don't start seeing tougher music being written for horn players until the mid 19th century when the modern valve horn started to come around. And this was a huge deal because it allowed us to play chromatically. We also had our range get a lot wider, a lot more extremely high and low, and it just allowed for repertoire to be much more difficult and virtuosic. I have a few things I'm going to be playing for you today. Uh, three of which are from standard orchestral excerpts, along with a few of my colleagues. The first one we're playing is Beethoven's third symphony. We're playing the trio from that symphony, which was definitely inspired by the hunting horn, as you'll hear. The next thing we're playing is from Dvorak's cello concerto, from the beautiful second movement. And the last thing we're playing is from Richard Strauss's Don Juan.
thank you so much for tuning in to the Sweet Melody Cares virtual performance series, and I hope you all are staying safe and well during this difficult time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Gustavo Leite. I'm 27 years old, and I'm a trumpet player originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm a second year Master of Music student at Bryce University, the Shepherd School of Music. And my main teachers are Barbara Butler and Charles Geyer. I hope you're all healthy and safe during this weird time. In fact, I'm currently recording this video in my hometown, Brazil, due to the COVID situation. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about my instrument. <coughs> I've been playing the trumpet since I was seven years old, so it's been 20 years since I decided to become a professional musician and a professional trumpet player. In order to make sound with the trumpet, uh, we need vibration. And if we combine our air going forward and our lips vibrating with our air, we will have a very funny sound like this but if we put this combination inside this little tube which is called the mouthpiece and this is the main tool of the trumpet it's the main tool that we can make sound inside the instrument and we do the same inside this mouthpiece we will have a very buzzy and funny sound just like this and if we combine both inside the instrument, we'll have this. So there we go. Now you know how to make sound in the trumpet. What I love the most about the trumpet is we can play really loud. We can play march style music, fanfare style music but we also can play really soft, we can play really smooth, really connected, and uh, beautiful and lyrical passages. And this was my choice uh, for you tonight in order to show what the trumpet, what we can do with the trumpet. So I took a little orchestral excerpt uh, from the piece called Pines of Rome by Otto Respighi. It is a offstage solo in the second movement. Uh, offstage means that the trumpet player is not on stage playing, but he's actually um, outside the stage. Um, and you can close your eyes and imagine that um, uh, an angel is talking to someone in the earth, and uh, and you can just let it go of. Um, all uh, the worries and just imagine yourself in a very peaceful place and uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, I hope you stay safe and I hope you learned a little bit about this great instrument that is the trumpet thank you so much have a nice day
violin is like the soprano of the orchestra. It is the highest instrument of the string family. And there are actually two sections in the orchestra of violins. There's the first violin section and the second violin section. You'll often hear the violin featured with the melody of a piece, and it often has a lot of high register passages, a lot of technical passages as well. Um, I love playing the violin as I think it's a very sweet instrument. There's a lot of um, potential for representing the human voice with the violin, I think. The violin can do a lot. It, first of all, can play a legato sound, which is a very melodic sound. And we can also make a staccato sound and play very quickly. Um, and we also can play pizzicato with our finger. The piece that I'm going to be playing for you is Paganini's Caprice, number 22. And Paganini was an Italian virtuosic violinist of the Romantic era. He kind of had a, the rumor of being the devil of the violin. He, they, people believed that he actually sold his soul to the devil in order to play the violin as well as he could. He composed 24 caprices. Each one is a very technically challenging piece for the violinist and it features a different technical challenge for the violinist. And for this particular caprice, some of the technical challenges would involve the double stops, which involves playing more than one note at the same time, um, as well as the staccato bowing that happens in the second part of the piece. And also just the dexterity of the second part of the piece, which goes into the minor key. It's kind of the serious portion of the piece. Here is Paganini's Caprice, number 22. The viola is the second highest string instrument of the string family. The viola is a little bit bigger than the violin. I brought both for you so you can see a comparison. And it has a lower register in comparison to the violin. 
So where the violin has an E string as its highest string, and it goes E, A, D, G, the viola doesn't have this high E string, and instead it starts at A and proceeds down perfect fifths below, and it has a low string called the C string. Kind of similar to the cello, the same strings as the cello, just an octave above, or high, one octave higher. It's played the same way as a violin on our shoulder, and we just have to use a little bit of a different technique in order to produce a deeper, richer sound that these big, fat strings produce on the viola. So I'll give you a demonstration. On the violin, these are the strings. We have the E string, A string, D string, G string. On the viola, which is bigger, as you can see, we have the A string, D string, G string, and C string. I enjoy playing the viola because you're in the middle of the action in the string part of the orchestra. You're really able to interact with the upper voices, the violins, first violins and second violins, and you're also able to interact with the cellos and double basses, not to mention the rest of the orchestra as well. So you're really in the heat of everything. The piece that I'm going to be sharing with you is the Bach Cello Suite in C major, Bach Cello Suite number three. So it's a piece that was actually originally written for cello and it's been arranged for the viola as the register is similar. And I'm going to be playing for you the first and the second movements, the prelude and the allemande. The prelude has a very grand feeling to it, and the allemande has a playful and very graceful, elegant feel to it. When I play these pieces, I like to imagine that I'm in a very opulent space as they allow for a lot of resonance. And I'd love for you to maybe close your eyes as I'm playing and imagine yourself in a very grand opulent space as I play. <laughs>
and welcome to Sweet Melody Care Virtual Performances. My name is Kai Denise and I'm a cellist at the Shepherd School of Music at Rice. I'm a second year master's degree student and I'm speaking to you from Houston, Texas. This is my best friend and my lifelong companion, the cello. It is the second largest instrument of the string family and it can be played with the bow or by plucking the strings. We use our right hand with the bow or by plucking to produce the sound and our left hand to change the notes. I'll be playing for you a movement from Bach's Cello Suite number no. 6. Bach was a German composer and he was born in 1685. Although that seems like a very long time ago, his music is very important for all of us musicians.
Thank you all so much for attending this Sweet Melody Care virtual performance SSM Artist Series. A special thank you to all of the fantastic performers in this video for dedicating their time and their talent to share such beautiful music with us. And a special thank you to the Richter Outreach Grant for helping support the production of this video. We look forward to sharing more with you soon. Take care.